pleasure to know him, gosh, maybe over 20 years now. Uh, first, initially through some connections we made with a large multi-site trial, uh, the HF Action trial. Since then, we've kept in close touch and uh, consider him now a colleague and a friend. I've known Dr. Foreman initially as a mentee and subsequently as a colleague. He is an expert teacher, he is an investigator, he is a clinician, a very strong advocate. From the very beginning, obviously, shared interest in geriatric cardiology or cardiovascular disease and disorders in um, older people, specifically the complexities of caring for people in that age group and the fact that most cardiology studies particularly at that time, vastly underrepresented uh, older adults, despite the fact that older people, but underrepresented in clinical trials. So we had that shared interest, and I think that um, from the very beginning, we had a very uh, collegial relationship. It has been truly a pleasure for me to witness over time his evolution relative to first listening to others, trying to get it right, wanting to be part of the big picture of advancing preventive cardiology or exercise cardiac rehabilitation to, to now really leading the field with an innovative and aggressive research agenda. So I, I, all along the way, I believe he's just tried to get it right and wants to help advance what we do. Great person to work with, um, very thoughtful, very considerate of others. Uh, very um, inclusive. Dr. Dan Foreman is acknowledged as a leader in geriatric cardiology. And in this emerging field, when people look to experts for geriatric cardiology, it is Dr. Dan Foreman's name that always comes to the forefront. Sometimes part of your professional connections with people are fortunate enough to bleed or spill over to personal connections with people. And it's, it has been a joy over the past 20 years to talk about children's and their colleges and their weddings and, and you know, spouses and all those types of things that you'd have great conversations with in terms of family dynamics and families growing and, 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 and um, you know, the interactions that we have as colleagues, but also as, as friends. The word that comes to mind is just a very close friend. One of his important contributions to cardiac rehab has been aligned with his interest in geriatric cardiology in promoting expansion of the model of cardiac rehabilitation beyond um, the traditional thinking about cardiac rehabilitation, where it's a, a place that you go and uh, the exercise under supervision and monitoring and in phase two and so, and so forth. To have a, a kind of a expanded uh, per perspective on what cardiac re rehabilitation can be, including um, uh, addressing some of the other issues that are so common in older adults and moving that forward through um, research and, uh, and advocacy. Over time, he's kept his focus on that one area that he's interested in. He's always been interested in cardiac rehabilitation, but he's kept his focus on, on our, our older population, our geriatric population. He's done the additional training and he's, he's bled that, he's pushed that into his research. And now he's advancing the field through his publications, through his data, through his writings, through his, through his thought leadership. Here we have a leader and we should be proud to acknowledge him as one of us and to share with him the glory of his receiving the Established Investigator Award. You truly epitomize um, a preventive cardiologist or a cardiologist interested in exercise that is trying to advance science, advance society. This is what we do for a living. Um, it's impressive. You have a lot to be proud of and um, you are so very, very, very well deserving of this award. My best to you. Congratulations, Dan. Um, you know, this is a great honor and uh, very well deserved and happy to hear that you are the recipient of, uh, of this award and congratulations and uh, best wishes in uh, receiving this award from 
ACVTR.